Hi, everyone. Don't be shy to scoot in. Don't be shy to scoot in. Just saying. Um, hola a todos. Buenas tardes. Um, first, before I get started, I just want to draw your attention to the program. There is a QR code with live captions if you need those. Um, so please feel free to scan the QR code with your camera on your phone, and you will be able to see live captions on there. Um, I am Jacqueline Flores, and I am the LTC producer. <laughs> Bienvenidos to the 2022 LTC Comedy Carnival. It's been a long time coming. I'm so happy to see all of your faces today and your torsos. Um, thank you for joining us to celebrate the incredible talent we have lined up for the next three days. And thank you to Mika and Tony and the entire staff at Su Teatro for hosting us. For those that don't know what the LTC stands for, it stands for the Latinx Theater Commons. We are a commons, which means we are a digital, virtual, and public square. By being part of this event, you are a member of the commons. If you post on our Facebook page, read a piece about Latinx Theater on HowlRound, you are a member of the commons. Anyone with anything to say or do related with Latinx Theater that chooses to use our public square is a member of the commons. There are no dues, there is no acceptance process. If you're here, you're in the commons and we are so happy you are here. Yeah. A commons is a resource owned by no one that benefits everyone. In a commons, we all manage these resources. In the LTC, our resources are managed by a steering and advisory committee. The LTC uses a horizontal rather than vertical power structure. Our programming is decided and curated by a steering committee of 38 people with a little help along the way from myself. Uh, the steering committee is made up of volunteers who believe in the mission of the LTC and help continue to push it forward. The LTC also has an advisory committee made up of 34 members. The advisory committee is for those who have served on the LTC steering committee before and whom I'm grateful to lean on for guidance and advice. If you are part of the LTC steering or advisory committees, can you please stand? Yay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your work and commitment to the LTC. If this is your first convening with the LTC or you want to learn more about what we do and how, Please go up to any of those people that just stood up and introduce yourself and start a conversation. <laughs> if you're here this weekend and you think to yourself, hey, I want to be a part of this and make decisions, join us. Or better yet, if you're here this weekend and you see things that could be improved, even better. We'd love to have you on the steering committee. I know you've been waiting a long time to gather again, and I'm so grateful to be in conversation with you all together. But I do want to um, take a moment to remind us that the pandemic is not over. Please continue to wear your masks and uh, distance yourself while eating your, or drinking if you're not able to be outside. Um, there's also some helpful pins that you can choose to tell others what you're comfortable with, um, with social and physical interaction. So let's please all uh, be respectful of those. Um, yeah, I can't believe we're here at opening ceremonies for Comedy Car Carnival. Some of you were there in the 2015 Carnival and even the last one in 2018. Uh, Advisory Committee member Lisa Portes was a champion of both of those events. She couldn't be here with us today, so she sent a little greeting for all of you um, all the way from Chicago. Hola, hola, amores. My name is Lisa Portes, and I'm one of the co-founding members of the Latinx Theater Commons and the champion of the inaugural 2015 Carnaval of New Latinx Work, as well as Carnaval 2018. And I am so excited for you all to spend the next three days at the 2022 Comedy Carnaval there in Denver 
oh my God, I wish I could be there. Um, I'm so sad not to be there, but my daughter graduates high school today. And as my mother said, your child only graduates high school once, honey. So you gotta be there. So I am here and thrilled for her and also have a major case of foams. Uh, not being there with you all. I wanna share with you a few words about the importance and the impact of the LTC's field-facing events and specifically the Carnaval. Carnaval 2015 featured 12 incredible Latinx writers. And through our work and the El Fuego Initiative, uh, which provided micro grants to theaters around the country who raised their hand and said, I wanna produce one of those plays, we managed to get 10 of those 12 writers full productions across the country. Uh, between 2016 and 2019. Pausa, pausa for aplausa. That's incredible. Um, and in 2018, we featured six writers, uh, two of which had world premiere productions of the plays that were featured at Carnaval 2018 um, in the 2019-20 season prior to the COVID shutdown. Those were Alexis Shear's Our Dear Dead Drug Lord and Noah Diaz's Richard Jane and Dick and Sally. And who knows what else would have happened had COVID not come along and who knows what's still to come. Uh, the Carnaval 2018 also featured designers, 12 incredible designers pulled together by Christopher Acebo and Regina Garcia. 12 designers uh, worked together on the six plays and have been, um, I'm sure they were working like mad before and have been working like mad since. Um, you're gonna see three of those designers actually at Quixote Nuevo tonight. Efren Delgadillo Jr. on sets, Pablo Santiago Brandwine on lights, and David Molina on sound and music. And the music is fantastic, as are, of course, the sets, lights, and sound. Um, uh, but it was just a, a, a thrilling opportunity at, um, to work with all of the designers at Carnaval 2018. And listen, I'm all about like, let's get the jobs. Let's get folks jobs. Let's get folks work seen. And it is events like this that allow us to come together to get to know one another, to see one another's work from, for Latinx and non-Latinx theater decision makers from around the country to come together and see what we're up to and produce the work. That's why we do this. And that is what changes the American theater. So with that, I want to say you're in the hands of amazing leaders, Emilia Acosta Powell and Jacqueline Flores. You're gonna see work by incredible comedians, artists, comedian artists. Um, I hope you laugh, I hope you sing, I hope you dance, I hope you party, um, but mainly I hope you laugh and celebrate Latinx joy in this moment as we come out of COVID and continue the battle forward. And with that, I hand you over to the inimitable Amelia Acosta Powell. Hello everyone, bienvenidos al Comedy Carnaval. I'm Amelia Costa Powell. I am a member of the Latinx Theater Commons Steering Committee and I'm the event champion for this convening. Um, thank you to Lisa for the introduction. My first LTC event was the 2015 Carnaval of which Lisa was the wonderful champion. And I had been to a lot of other new play festivals but I had never felt welcome at those. Um, and I felt so welcomed at the LTC Carnaval, so it's an honor to have an opportunity to continue that tradition, and I hope everyone here today feels as welcome at Comedy Carnaval as I got the pleasure to feel in 2015. Um, at the most basic level, I was inspired to pitch the Comedy Carnaval because I just love comedy, and it was selfish. Um, <laughs> Just a fact about me, my instinct in a fucked up situation is to make a joke. And when I pitched this event in 2018, I did not comprehend how fucked up our situation would be, but I'm glad we get to be here laughing about it. Um, the inspiration also came from a lot of frustration with the, domin the dominant culture of American theater. I noticed that when Latine stories are programmed at primarily white institutions, the vast majority feature trauma porn narratives about immigration, narcotics trafficking, imprisonment, family separation, gang violence. 
at best, maybe this overemphasis on narratives of Latina oppression is a well-intentioned desire to foster dialogue about relevant issues. At worst, it feels like a calculated and deeply rooted strategy to propagate harmful two-dimensional stereotypes in order to justify and reinforce the status quo of white supremacy. Either way, I am over it. And to be clear, because I know we have a lot of artists in the room and online of a lot of different disciplines, I am not against dramatic Latine plays. I just want more comedic Latine stories centering our joy and happiness and showing us as full humans. Yeah. Absolutely, our communities are facing injustice and tragedy. Absolutely, we should address those problems. But humor is one of the most powerful tools that our communities have to tackle oppression. Laughter, we know, can soothe the broken heart, can unite coalitions ac across differences, and can scare the shit out of a bully. I used to think that my aforementioned tendency to undercut tension with a joke was a sign of immaturity or a conflict aversion or bad manners, and it might be. <laughs> but I also have since come to believe that it is a fundamental survival instinct. We've all heard that laughter is the best medicine. We hear it so much, it's cliche, but not at Comedy Carnival. Here we are in the business of dispensing the medicine of laughter for our individual and our communal healing. With the programming of the Comedy Carnival, we aimed to explode historically confined definitions of Latinidad, of comedy, and of theater. Our request for proposals invited submissions not only of plays, I'm sorry, I'm now hearing it popping. Should I step back from this mic? Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> just a brief interlude to, for my self-esteem. Um, <laughs> Our request for proposals invited submissions of not only plays, but any comedic performance. I'm thrilled that our final lineup includes carpas, sketch comedy, stand-up, solo performance, and even a short film, in addition to three staged readings of plays. And the plays themselves range wildly from absurdism to a queer bilingual clown show to, <laughs> to family dramedy with puppets. The planning and execution of this event has been a true act of pleasure activism, and I hope that your attendance will be too. I hope the convening offers you what you need, whether that's relief or escape or sustainable strategies for resilience and resistance. I hope you laugh. I hope it inspires you to use your platform to tell stories that celebrate systematically marginalized people surviving, thriving, and having fun. And if you can't think of any of those stories, no problem. That is what Comedy Carnival is for. And you have on your lanyard a zip drive that has not only the pieces that you're going to witness as part of the Carnival, but also all of the finalists' work. And they are amazing. There are so many good works on here. I want to just say a few thank yous before I go. I want to thank the programming committee members, the selection committee members, the fantastic staff at Su Teatro, the HowlRound team. All of you have done so much to support this event, and I'm incredibly grateful. I specifically want to thank Mika, who is Su Teatro's managing director. Um, she has, yeah. <laughs> She's over there hiding on the stair. Um, she has worked so hard and been such an incredible partner. I'm so grateful to you, Mika. Um, and I, of course, want to thank Jacqueline, Flo Ooh, Jacqueline Flores, the LTC producer. She was hired midstream of this event, which has been in the works for three and a half long ass years. <laughs> and she just dove in. I'm so grateful to you, Jacqueline. She has been um, a voice of reason, a fierce advocate for the event, and a late night confidant when um, crises arose. And the, you've all been making theater over the last two years, so I don't have to tell you, a lot of crises arose. <laughs> um, so just thank you so much, Jacqueline.
finally, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Sioux Teatro's Executive Artistic Director, Tony Garcia. I, yes. <laughs> I started seeing theater at a very young age, but I never saw myself represented on stage until I saw Tony's production of Papi Me and Cesar Chavez. And I know I'm in good company in the Denver community. There are so many Chicanes who have been welcomed at Su Teatro when they could not find themselves anywhere else on stage. This year is Su Teatro's 50th anniversary. 50, you guys. What? That is such an incredible achievement. Keeping any theater company running for 50 years is amazing. Uh, but keeping a culturally specific theater open for five decades through a global pandemic without a fraction of the funding support that dominant culture organizations receive is heroic. Yeah. <laughs> I am humbled for the LTC Carnival, Comedy Carnaval to be hosted by Su Teatro during this momentous year. Tony, thank you for your tremendous service and thank you for hosting us. Welcome. Hola, buenas tardes. How you doing? Uh, thank you, Amelia. Thank you, Jacqueline. They're incredible, incredible crew to work with, you know. And of course, Mika, uh, coordinating this stuff and keeping me. We had a staff meeting the other day, and people were going through and saying, "I do everything." It's like I do nothing here. I don't ask me anything specific about what goes on here. I have no idea. I just go wherever Mika tells me to, or I get ordered to. Right? And that's what happens when you get to a certain place. Um, <laughs> but this has been a great, a great group to work with. We've been part of the LTC for some time. I just wanted to say, as I keep thinking about the commons, right, you can actually be part of the commons. I mean, it just shows that extraordinary people can be part of the commons. Get it? Extraordinary commons. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Come on, you guys, stay with me. <laughs> so uh, before we go into that, right, are you not extraordinary? Did I miss something there? <laughs> and are you not part of the commons? All right, you're going to think about this at about 3 o'clock in the morning. You're just going to roll over and pee in your bed. Um, but before we go to that, uh, I think we need to do something that we, that we always do, and, and, and it's become more of a common uh, for us to do this here, that to recognize that we sit in the land of the Cheyenne, the Arapaho, and the Utes. This is our historical tradition. And for us, it's not only enough to say that these are the people who nurtured this land and preserved it and kept it here, but it also is the next step of us talking about how we actually rectify and make reparations for what took place. It's not enough to say, we took your land, thank you for it, we're recognizing it, now we're moving on, that's bullshit. We understand that it's only the first step, and we understand also, as mestizos, that we are part of that tradition and part of that history. The whole western half of the continent was part of the the, the Utonawat nation, they thought that was the language they spoke. So we are united by language, we are united by blood, we are united by so many things, and we are the future of this continent, these two continents there. So when we talk about recognizing our past, understanding that what we are doing is taking that next step for our future. So that's how I feel when I go to any place, it's like, talk to me about how great the land is, now tell me how you, what you're gonna do to make it necessarily better for the next generation. I wanted to offer you that. <laughs> all right, all right. The other thing, I know it sounds like I'm serious and I'm not, and I am and I'm not, right? Uh, so the other thing is, uh, in, we talked about, we started this process in the, in the beginning of the pandemic, right? The pandemic hit in the middle of all the, and for somebody in, 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 in my generation, in a lot of our generation, we lost so many people, uh, the joke, it's, you don't have to laugh because you haven't laughed at anything else, any, so we'll just keep it consistent. <laughs> the joke is that I've been going to so many velorias, right? Is that in the churches, I've been in church more often than I have in the last 50 years, and God's going, what the hell is up, right? He is confused about what's taking place, but it's really a drag that that is happening. And a lot of times people go, let's go and take a moment of silence. I would ask us to do something different than that, is that take a moment to say their names, to fill this space, with their presence, with their spirit, 
and share it. So I'll step back a little bit and just shout it out as you feel comfortable with it, and then we'll move to the next step. Is that cool with you? All right, let's do it. I'll start. Albino Manzanares. Trini Lopez. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so the, the next thing is to just talk a little bit about Tu Teatro. I don't know how many how familiar you are with them. Yes, we are 50 years old. We come out of the Teatro Chicano movement. We say that very proudly. We consider our community theater. It's really interesting when people say community theater because they kind of look down their nose. Well, then you guys do community theater. It's like not as good as what we do. It's like, well, what's the difference between community theater and professional theater? It's like, do you get paid for it? You go, yeah. I said, do you get paid enough to live off of it? And they go, no, nobody endeavors doing that, <laughs> right? So go, well, I got educated. It's like, well, I got a degree. They give those things out to anybody, right? <laughs> so what's the difference? And I'll tell you what our difference is. Our work is for our community. It comes from our community. And that's the main focus of everything that we do. And in return, our community has built everything that we have. You might not know it. You're one of the first audiences to come in here to these brand new seats, right? <laughs> and the way it happened was the son of one of our actors, who's been with us for 40 years, said, I'm clearing out this old movie house, and they just have, they have all these seats. They want me to throw them, but I want to get them over to you. This is in the middle of the pandemic. I was the only one who wasn't sick. So we, we, we rented a truck, and we pull them all in here, right? And we all, my staff, Steve and Arnold, put them in together. And it was like, this is how things are done when you're connected to that community. We sit on a property here. Every other property along this street line, right, not every, but most, are actually owned by developers, right? We are getting pushed out of our land as we acknowledge our land. Our community, this Denver was, West Side was Denver, one of Denver's first Chicano barrios. I grew up in this neighborhood, right? As a matter of fact, Denver began where Ruby Hill is, which is about two miles down Santa Fe Drive, and it's part of the Santa Fe Trail, right? And that first thing, it was incorporated, the first town that was incorporated here was a place called Mexican Diggings. They called it Mexican Diggings because there were Mexicans digging there. Right? And they were digging for gold. And it was before they, they made it Denver. So our history here is really, really deep. But it becomes smaller. Our footprint becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. Denver's a cool place. But there's Denver and then there's white Denver. Right? That I, I always knew there were places I could go and places I couldn't go. Right? And so what we did is we moved into this space. And we had our first space in the barrio. And that space was, it was an old school house in the worst neighborhood, in the poorest neighborhood, not the worst neighborhood. I live in that neighborhood. That's probably why it's the worst neighborhood. Um, <laughs> but we were there 21 years. And if anybody came into it, it was a school house. We had a school room. I knocked down a wall. And we had, we'd bring in 100 people, 100 people a night. And then by the end of it, after 10, 21 years, we had people coming in, 100 people every night for five days a week. And our neighbors said, do you mind moving? Because we'd like our parking spaces back, <laughs> right? And we moved down here into a space that had been owned by numerous other white entities here, right? And it was supposed to be a community space, but there was always this thing of, well, you guys come in, we'll do the managing, and then you can visit. Well, they went into foreclosure, and the stupid Mexicans bought it for a song, right? <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. This summer, and probably during the course of this role, we will pay off the mortgage on this building. And what that means is that this space will be here for the next generation and the generation after that for you guys and your kids and the kids after that and all of us. It will, go, it will be part of our space. Or we could sell it for $3 million and then I can go live in San Antonio and eat a lot of Mexican food, right? <laughs> uh, but I think we're probably going to do the other thing here as Mika wouldn't let me go that far. But... So that's always been our vision and our relationship. And all, we were fortunate to be part of a national network and be know so many people across the country. Uh, we could talk more about our history. I just wanted to share a little bit of our background tonight. We're going to have fun with the play called Chicano Sing the Blues. And it's a question, do Chicano sing the blues? Oh, man, yeah, do we? Right? I, I stand and we do the things called Chicano Music Festival. And I'll come up here and I'll say, well, I'm just trying to figure out what Chicano music is. Uh, do Chicanos do rancheras? And people go, yeah. Do Chicanos do salsa? I go, yeah. Do Chicanos do the blues? Yeah. We do all that stuff. 
right? And do we laugh at everything? Nobody is better at making fun of themselves <laughs> than Latinos, right? <laughs> Nobody is better at finding the, even in the middle of a funeral, it was like, she looks so much better now, right? <laughs> and you go, I, I have to, I'll tell you one funeral story. We went, we sang at this, this family's friend, one of the members of the theater, their, their father died suddenly. And we sang at the, the thing, and, and, and the daughter came up to me, and afterwards she was so happy, but she was been crying. And she had all these mocos just rolling down her nose, right? And she said, oh, Tony, I'm so glad you came here. And she came to hug me, and all I could think about was what my shirt was going to look like. <laughs> as she went, that's right in the middle of this very sad moment, right? That's not unusual. We know sadness. We love sadness. We hear, we hear volver, and we go, that's so beautiful. It's about a relationship breaking up. Right? All our best love stories are about how jacked up our relationships are, right? So we live in that world. It's great to be able to welcome some of the best smart asses from around the country. And you are, and you know you are. You are always, all the things you're being punished for, now you do them on stage and people give you money to do that. Thank you, you finally woke up. Muchisimas gracias. beautiful big space and we're not that many people and I have a dream that we're going to be able to make a big circle. I feel like it can go like this. <laughs> yeah? Are you up for it? <laughs> and Arnold, can we use one of our wireless mics? Is that okay? This is beautiful. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Um, I know a bunch of you attended Abigail and Kevin's incredible new convener session. Thank you to them. Shout out to them. Which means a bunch of y'all introduced yourself to each other, and you're just going to do it again. So get excited. Some people weren't there. <laughs> um, if we can have this wireless mic turned on, then I would love for us to pass it around. <laughs> if we can't, we're going to shout out. All right. Wait, I see an Arnold. An Arnold spotted in the wild. The red one, red tape one? Oh, hello, hello. Yay, okay. Okay. Awesome. Here's the prompt, okay? We have, uh, and it's gonna go quick, right? So, and it's low stakes. What's the worst that could happen? You'll say the wrong name and then later you'll be like, you guys, I don't know why I said that, that's not my name. <laughs> um, <laughs> here's the prompt. Your name or, you know, how you like to be called, where you're here from or where you're based, and just the punchline of a joke you like. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you like 30 seconds right now. Here's the idea. 
you think a punchline's interesting, you're like, huh, what was the setup of that joke? Go talk to that person. Hear the rest of that joke. Um, I can already, no, no, wait, 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 with the murmuring. I can see that some of you are panicking. Here, here's an option for you. If it gets to you and you have not thought of a punchline to a joke, I have two invitations for you. Invitation number one, we can't prove it's not the punchline to a joke. <laughs> Say anything. Number two option, if it gets to you and you can't think of anything, not even a fake one, go ahead and give us your name, where you're based, and say as loud as you can, I'm panicking! Okay? Three excellent options. You can give us the punchline to a joke. You can make up a punchline to a joke that does not yet exist, or you can tell us you're panicking. All of that will be bonding. Okay. Abigail has the mic. Are you going to start us off? Yeah. Abigail, oh, oh, and it's fast, right? Fast. Okay. Oh, Abigail Vega, Boston, Massachusetts. I'm panicking. Uh, hi, Juliana, based in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and a toaster. <laughs> Eric Sandvold, Denver, Colorado. What? And leave show business? I'm Stephanie Fadul, Brooklyn, New York, and I'm panicking. Oh. <laughs> Daniela Tome, Brooklyn, New York, a fruity eggplant. Uh, Kimberly Gomez, Manhattan, New York, and oh shit, talking muffin. Uh, Erisa Ann Riley, New Jersey, and you got a drink named Melvin. Rolando Garza, Edinburgh, Texas. Y se cayó y se quedó pegado. Francisco Garza, Edinburgh, Texas. No se venden cocas sin corbata. Ann Carol Pence, Lawrenceville, Georgia, 11-2. Jackie Segui, Lawrenceville, Georgia. I'm panicking! Samuel de Valdez, from San Diego, El Florido. Vanessa Lopez, San Diego, California. You know we can't do that kind of math here. Hmm. Paul Araujo, San Diego. And then she sat on it. <laughs> Deborah Gallegos, Lakewood, Colorado, S-O-C-K-S. Jacqueline Flores, Washington, D.C. I'm panicking. Mika Garcia de Benavides, Denver. Uh, there's no F in strawberry. Diego Guariola, um, oh, uh, Denver, Colorado, and then I'm panicking. <laughs> Adriana Gonzalez, Denver, Colorado. The, he had no body to go with. Amy Wagoner, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, a career in theater. <laughs> uh, I'm Sorani Gutierrez, um, coming from Dallas, Texas, and knock knock who? Uh, Trevor Buffoni from Houston, Texas. You got paid to do this? <laughs> Mike Espinosa from Phoenix, Arizona. It pays to learn a second language. Teresa Marrero from Dallas, Texas. ¿Y qué? <laughs> Katie Ventura from Los Angeles. We're like besties AF. <laughs> Daniel Jaques, San Diego, Tijuana. And that's it. Richard Perez, uh, Michigan. Wrecked him, nearly killed him. <laughs> ah! <laughs> 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 Alejandra Cisneros, Los Angeles, San Francisco. El huevito se hizo un huevón. <laughs> Cristina Fernández, Los Angeles. <laughs> Anthony Aguilar, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> Angélica Cabrera, Michoacán, México. ¡Qué barbaridad! <laughs> Malena Pennycook, Austin, Texas. Oh. <laughs> uh, Adam Flores, St. Louis, Missouri. So he looks at me and he spits it out in his hand and he says, you got to keep your bait warm. <laughs> I'm Becca Morton, San Antonio, Texas, and he disappeared without a tres. Uh, hey. Ilse Sacharias Rivera, Chicago, Illinois. Um, I just fuck a lot. <laughs> Uh, 
Hey, I'm Crystal Rosa. I'm from Philly. Um, and uh, I never thought I'd hear my abuela say that. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh, Frankie DeVoe Gonzalez, uh, Dallas, Texas. And you're not ugly. You're just not your own type. <laughs> That's really sad. Um, <laughs> Vanessa Luron from San Diego, California, and I'm not afraid of it anymore. Tessa Douglas in New Jersey, and that was for Pittsburgh. Claylish Coldiron, Boulder, Colorado, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. <laughs> Carmen Amon from San Diego, and a dancing cookie. <laughs> Victoria Vesepeda from San Diego, and I, now I have to change my sheets. <laughs> Benito Vasquez from Houston, Texas. You don't believe me? Google it. <laughs> Tisok Diaz, uh, Long Island City. Ay, güey, me pisaste el Juanete. <laughs> Maricela Trevino Orfa from Austin, Texas. It's butt. <laughs> Sonia Fernandez from Tacoma Park, Maryland. Moo. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Aprinia Levy from Oakland, California. You're going to eat me, just like the book says. <laughs> Anthony Rodriguez, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. They keep falling through the holes in his hands. Delaney Guegas, uh, Brooklyn, New York. Porque somos dos ways. Uh, Adrian Dawes, Fayetteville, Arkansas, because they're ugly and they stink. <laughs> Tomas Salas, Austin, Texas. Como me huele. <laughs> Paul Del Bosque, Austin, Texas. Fruity Pebbles, vato. <laughs> Osvaldo Sandoval Leon, Hamilton, New York, and I'm panicking. Sonia Alvarez, uh, Los Angeles, uh, ketchup. Uh, Fran Astorga from San Francisco. ¿Te lo vendieron? Nico Kimson, Petaluma, California. No, his name is Kevin. <laughs> Kevin Becerra. <laughs> Lifelong victim of Nico Kimson. <laughs> Boston, Massachusetts. Um, in his sleeves. Um, Alejandra Luna from Phoenix, Arizona. And. <gasps> Angel Garcia from Arlington, Texas, slash Greeley, Colorado. I don't remember having corn earlier. Ash Para, Houston, Texas. Pero con su, ¿quién somos nosotros para juzgar? Alida Olguin Gunn from Tucson, Arizona. Arr, they're driving me nuts! Uh, Norma Medina, uh, Dallas, Texas. Uh, vagina Fleet Trap! Uh, Giancarlo Yunen, Los Ángeles. Eh, y la sacaron de la fila. Real Vargas Alaniz, uh, Yoko Territory, Wind, California. En frijoladas, mijo. We're not. Oh, sorry, sorry. Done. Just kidding, everyone. Just kidding. <laughs> go on. Okay, I don't get to go. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I panicked. I panicked. Uh, it's not going to be able to beat that. Amelia Costa Powell, Louisville, Kentucky, Petro de Menos. Monica Oliveira uh, from Cleveland, Ohio. Mice as well eat the appetizers. <laughs> Sebastián Edos Vargas from Lima, Peru, living in Connecticut, and I'm actually panicking. <laughs> Alyssa Gomez, Washington Heights, New York. Sacamoco, Sacacaca. <laughs> Santiago y Asinti, coming from New York. Ni se te ocurra ni pensarlo. Uh, Gina Sandy Diaz uh, from Costa Rica uh, by way of Fresno, California, and uh, Stella! <laughs> 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 
Milka Ortiz from Tucson, Arizona. That's what he said. <laughs> um, Daphne Secre coming from Los Angeles, and I'm panicking. <laughs> Alex Alfaro from Los Angeles. Look at the bright side, at least there's no hair on it. <laughs> Mari Mersa Burgos, Denver, Colorado. Postamal. Sergio Godoy, El Paso, Texas. Oops. <laughs> Kalina Gallardo, Denver, Colorado, slash El Paso, Texas. Mix nuts. <laughs> okay, one more. Nothing like starting your first LTC event with interrupting the circle, right? <laughs> Vijay Matthew, Boston, Massachusetts. Purple. Thank you all, that was awesome. I'm gonna ask several of you for those jokes. Um, while we're in this circle, if people are comfortable to stay up for a few more minutes, yeah? Okay, if you're not, of course, feel free to sit. Do whatever you need throughout the carnival, feel comfortable. Um, now that you know people's names and their punchline, I just wanna help give us a little more sense of who's in the circle. So if you, if this is your first LTC event, can you raise your hand? Woo! <laughs> if this is your somewhere between second and fifth LTC event, raise your hand. Woo! <laughs> if you've been with the LTC since the very beginning, Raise your hand. Wow. Woo! I skipped a step. If you've been to more than five, but you weren't at the beginning. Mm, 2013 is what I was thinking of. Oh, I mean, I worked at Arena Stage, I have to say. <laughs> I have to say Washington. Great. Woo! Woo! If this is your first time in Denver, Colorado, raise your hand. Woo! If you've been to Colorado before but never lived here. Woo! If you are from Denver, Colorado. And if you aren't from Denver, Colorado, but you live here now. Woo! If you consider yourself funny. Woo! Claim it! Claim it! If you consider yourself an artist. If you consider yourself a gatekeeper. In one <laughs> I'll tell you what I meant, but also whatever context. What I mean is, at this event, over the next three days, you're gonna have the opportunity to meet a lot of awesome artists. You're gonna hear a lot of, or see, see hear, experience a lot of cool works of art. You're gonna learn of even more works than the ones that you actually experience. And if you have any opportunity to hire people, to program work, to recommend people to other people who hire people, to hand people money, uh, or however else you create space and opportunities and lift people up and celebrate them, you are a gatekeeper. Gate opener, thank you. Gate opener. Okay, let me ask that one again, now that we have a, a shared definition here. If you consider yourself a gate opener. Awesome. If you have a work that is being featured in the Comedy Carnaval.
All of, all of you keep your hands up and then add to that if you have a work on this zip drive that people can take, can take a look at. <laughs> if you work, have worked or currently work at Su Teatro, If you identify as part of the Latine, Latinx, et cetera, communities. <laughs> if your favorite kind of laugh is an evil laugh. <laughs> your hand went up immediately. <laughs> if your favorite, all right, we're not gonna hold you to it. If your favorite kind of laugh is a uh, laugh so hard you start crying. Yeah. If your favorite laugh is uh, you're trying not to laugh and snot comes out your nose. Okay. What am I missing? There's so many kinds of laughs. I could do that all day, but any like major category? Oh, laugh when you, uh, you laugh so hard you pee? Favorite? <laughs> Cackle? Chortle? Guffaw? Awesome. Uh, I know we said where we were from, but I just want to like give you a sense of that mapping. If you are from the West Coast. Whatever. From the East Coast? From the South, Woo. Woo. from the Midwest, Woo. from the Wild Wild West, which means it's west of the Midwest but east of the West Coast. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you are from Texas and you already haven't raised your hands. Southwest, yeah, okay, but yeah, Southwest. I was grouping it in case we had like North Dakotans, Montanans, Idahoans. Um, if you, I'm gonna make some broad categories here because I don't wanna put anyone on the spot. So I appreciate the ongoing feedback on the limitations of my prompts though, so keep it coming. Um, if you identify yourself as Early career. Yeah. Woo! Uh, Anyone who identifies yourself as mid career? <laughs> Woo! Anyone identify as a veteran of the field? Anyone retired? <laughs> um, amazing. I just want you to all to keep finding these intersections, right? Because there's so many. That's my absolute favorite thing about every LTC event. We have people from all over. Oh my gosh. And as I'm saying that, I just realized I said all these regions of the United States. People who are here who are not from the United States. Woo! We have so many people from so many different places, so many life experiences. It's an opportunity to make friends, to meet new colleagues, to learn about new artists who you can work with in the future. Keep finding those different points of connection or disconnection, build bridges. Um, and I'm so, so grateful that each and every one of you is here. I hope that you have a lot of fun. I hope that you all stay safe and be careful. Um, as just highlighting, as Jacqueline said, the pandemic is not over and we have a bunch of the performers from the pieces in our stuff. And if 
we give them COVID, then we won't have our shows. So that would just suck. So let's not. <laughs> um, I just want to give a really quick overview of what you can expect. Make sure that you got the info that you need. Um, after this, we're headed out back into the lobby. Um, we're going to have a fun snack break. I can't tell you how many amazing Latina-owned Denver local companies are providing awesome treats for us over the course of the next three days. Yeah! Um, then, 4 p.m., we have the reading of Escobar's Hippo by Frankie Gonzalez. That's back in this room. And then, after that, those who are heading to Quixote Nuevo at the Denver Center, there will be shuttle buses taking us down there. Or you don't have to ride the shuttle bus. You could get there another way if you want. Um, they're having a pre-show event. There's going to be food and things. And that show is at 7.30. And that's the rest of today. If you don't have a ticket, Jacqueline Flores will give you a ticket. I know. I just snuck one. Yeah. The shuttle buses are not bringing people back, depending where you're staying. Like, if you're at the Westin that we recommended, you're actually closer to just be there once you're at the Denver Center. But if you need help out finding where you need to go after the Denver Center, those of us who, are, uh, who have identified ourselves are here to help you. Anyone else? Questions? Awesome. Let's go have a fun snack break. Yeah.